Almost everybody has an opinion about science. But whatever your opinions, when discussions about science take place, there's often a lot of misunderstanding and ignorance. So I've picked out five things that unless you understand fully, you probably shouldn't talk about science. Imagine you wake up and you've lost your memory. You don't know where you are, who you are, or what you're doing there. You'll probably look around for a series of clues to try and figure this out. You might see some items like a wallet, PC, but there's nothing there that tells you why you were unconscious and have lost your memory. Then you see a bloody hammer on the floor and oh, it suddenly makes sense. All of this was the collection of evidence to try and explain why a certain situation occurred. In science it's kind of similar except often the explanation comes first. Scientists have an idea about something that they want to test. This is known as a hypothesis and more on it a little later. The evidence is then collected to see if it matches up with the hypothesis that they had. If it's correct, excellent. The hypothesis is correct, at least with this set of evidence. Every test that's ever done in the future now has to also back up that same hypothesis. If the evidence collected doesn't support the idea, then a new hypothesis has to be created, one that includes and embraces the new evidence that was collected. Evidence is key to everything in science. If the evidence doesn't back up the idea, the idea has to change. The scientific method tells us how to collect high quality evidence that can't be disputed. So let's say I have a small body of water and I have a hypothesis that when I add this unknown substance to it, it will turn the water red. It's food coloring. Red food coloring. We add some and mix it up and yes, it turns the water red. My hypothesis was correct. So now I can extend and modify my hypothesis to say that if I have food coloring of a certain color, if I add it to water, it will turn the water that color. Sweet. So let's try blue food coloring and it should turn the water blue and oh, no, no, it doesn't. The waters are kind of bluey green. So does that mean that the evidence doesn't back up my hypothesis? Well, no, because I didn't follow the scientific methods and I didn't therefore have a consistent set of starting conditions when carrying out the experiment. I should only be changing the color of the food coloring, but instead I started with water that was already a different color. Okay, so that's a very simple example. And I expect watching this, you already knew that if I had water that was already a different color, it wasn't gonna turn the same color as the food coloring. But this example does make the point that if your evidence collected doesn't follow the scientific method, it can't prove or disprove a hypothesis. To understand why peer review is important, I wanna tell you the story of cold fusion. Nuclear fusion is a developing technology that allows us to create energy in a similar way to the sun by fusing together hydrogen and turning it into helium. It involves various methods of raising the temperature of a hydrogen fuel to tens of millions of degrees. And this essentially allows the hydrogen atoms to smash into each other, fuse into helium, and in doing so, release energy. To reach temperatures this high already takes a ton of energy, and fusion is meant to be a power source for the future, so you need lots of energy to come out to overcome the energy investment you've already put in. However, way back in 1989, two chemists, Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons, claimed they had found a method to allow this to happen at room temperature. And this sounded amazing. Without the need to get to such insane temperatures, the whole process would be a lot easier. And it seemed like the problem of finding a clean and sustainable energy source was solved way back in 1989. It sounded too good to be true, and it was. Fleischmann and Pons measured a temperature increase and a source of neutrons that they claimed could not be explained by anything other than a fusion reaction taking place in their experiment. So their experiment was repeated by other scientists to see if they could replicate the result. Although this has now been underway for several days, no confirmation of the Utah result can be expected to appear for at least a few weeks. If even one single neutron were produced in here, it would establish that some fusion had taken place. But none of the experiments could repeat this. Ever. And this is why the peer review process is so important. A scientific paper has to be checked by other scientists to ensure the method and evidence collected have been done properly. And any experiments that are carried out need to be repeatable. They need to be carried out again and the same results need to be collected by other scientists. If no one can collect the same results, pretty clear indication that something went wrong and the results are not valid. This is where most people will make mistakes when talking about science because some words in everyday language are very different to what they mean in scientific language. And this can cause some confusion when discussing how valid scientific ideas actually are. We've already touched on what a hypothesis is, the idea you have that you want to test. And if you test it correctly according to the scientific methods, then any evidence you collect can prove or disprove your hypothesis. If this is peer reviewed and then it's found to still be true, then you're venturing into the realms of a scientific theory. A theory is a scientific idea that has been repeatedly tested and found to be true. 
and it can also a good theory can also explain future results that might be collected as well. An example of this is the geocentric theory of the Earth and the Sun and the heliocentric theory. The geocentric model was championed and refined down to incredible detail by the mathematician Ptolemy way back in the 2nd century. He used observations of the stars and planets to put together a model for the solar system where the Earth was at the center and everything else orbited around it. It could reasonably accurately predict where stars and planets were going to be in the future and for lack of any better evidence, this model held for nearly 1,500 years. It wasn't until 1619 when the astronomer Johannes Kepler finished developing his three laws of planetary motion that a heliocentric model could compete with the geocentric model for accuracy. Where it surpassed the geocentric model was when using Kepler's laws, he predicted a transit of Venus, where Venus passes in between the Earth and the Sun, to take place in the year 1631. Both models could very well explain past observations, but the heliocentric model won because it was able to more accurately predict what would happen in the future. We've just seen an example of how a model that was held to be true for 1500 years was overturned in the light of new scientific evidence. So is it true to say that every scientific theory can be proved true? Are we just uncertain about everything? Well, it's true that all theories are falsifiable. That means that they can be proven false if evidence is collected that suggests it. So in order to overturn established theories like evolution or the Big Bang, you would need an idea that better explains current evidence and observations, as well as new evidence that is not compatible with the old theory. And people try. Scientists and others try to collect evidence against these theories to try and prove them wrong. And it's a strength of these theories that they potentially can be proven wrong, but they haven't been. After all, the evidence you've collected says this is a ball and it looks like a ball, probably not a pancake. So I hope you feel empowered to go out there and talk about science. And if you do so, just remember there is one more mistake that people often make when talking about scientists and their discoveries. And if you fall into this trap too, then it could jeopardize any credibility you've just built. So if you want to find out what that mistake is and how to avoid it, then watch this video next and people will be dazzled by your knowledge of the scientific process and how discoveries get made. How am I supposed to record like this? <laughs>